So we spend a lot of time, uh, as, as Navin mentioned as well, uh, creating and making sure that the activities you have in the world and you know all the people you encounter there is variety in it so it's not just about shooting things you know you can see in the trailer for example we even have activities such as you can play dominoes you know in your camp uh, you can go fishing you can go hunting if you want or you can take care of business you know uh, by fighting back uh, Anton's army, right? So they, that, that was important to me. It's not just big, it's, it's full of opportunities for the player. Now, you, you mentioned the large scale city areas, which are uh, a first for the series. Um, there's always been sort of like encampments and towns and all that kind of stuff. Um, but to me, it's sort of like antithetical to the philosophy of Far Cry, which is always like in the wilderness and it's crazy. And obviously there's tons of that here, but how are you going to work uh, chaotic wildlife? into the city areas like i i will there just be you know animals running down the streets how, how's that going to pay off yeah the, the the urban environment is interesting to me because like you said you know it's what what is how does far cry work in an urban environment um and so for us that was full of opportunities for the for the ai for example how do they react to the player you know in, in such an area you're not you're not in the middle of a jungle this time you know uh you're, you're in esperanza so what does that mean um that that definitely was to me the unique side of city and also who says urban environment also says verticality so uh, that was another dimension that for us was exciting to to explore. Um, that being said, you know, it's it's a city, so just like in real life, there's not a ton of wildlife in the city, but you can definitely bring, for example, your amigos with you mm -hmm. in the city. You know, so uh, chorizo, uh, the little dog, or, or guapo, the crocodile, for example, um, and they definitely will help you out in that situation as well. I think on top of that, it's the, the notion that it's the Anton stronghold, right? So when you have a, a, a dictator like Anton, um, he needs his core seat of power. So you're going to encounter some of the game's most uh, difficult uh, enemies when you, when you approach uh, Esperanza, which will be a lot of fun. You mentioned um, the the sort of verticality of the the taller building settings and stuff like that. Will we get to see stuff like roof, rooftop fights? Will you you know scale the sides of buildings like you know Batman did in the 1960s? <laughs> so in the upcoming weeks, we'll show more you know uh, about the urban environment. But I think Navid uh, summarized it really well. Uh, what we wanted to have in terms of gameplay in the city specifically was that. It's the seat of power of Anton, meaning you can go in there, by the way, right from the beginning of the game, um, you know, but uh, it's going to be challenging. It's going to be really uh, challenging for you. So you got definitely to adapt your um, your your playstyle when you go in there. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to be able to, to share a bit more with you soon. Awesome. Um, tell me a little bit about sort of your creative process together. Uh, how do scenarios come together? Is this something, uh, David, that you kind of go, I have an idea for a gameplay thing, and Navid, you go, all right, I can write it, or Navid, you write something and hand it to David, and he's like, oh, I got to figure this out now. How does how does that relationship work? I think the main thing was, it's been a bit of both, uh, to be honest. Uh, me and David were there uh, right from the beginning uh, when there was uh, 10 of us and a in a sweaty, gross room <laughs> in somewhere in Ubisoft. Um, and so as we were zeroing in on Yara, you know, this, this island that's frozen in time, you know, in the Caribbean that has what we call these sort of resolve do-it-yourself uh, aspects, you know, David uh, and his team simultaneously were were jamming with us and, and and coming up with gameplay scenarios and features and that kind of thing. So it really was a, a constant open dialogue, uh, I think, all the way through. Uh, I can't think of a time when we weren't really talking. Um, but yeah, David, you, you jump in. Yeah, it's it's Resolver is the perfect example. So it's that do-it-yourself philosophy, as I've mentioned. And for us, that sparked a lot of ideas in our head. You know, um, it came from um, it, it came from Cuba originally. That philosophy of uh, making do with what you have. You know, and and for us, for the team, you know, when when the team visited uh, uh, Cuba for research, they found out a lot of uh, you know 
very cool and very weird objects that the population there made because of course of all the uh, economic sanctions that they had right so for example someone you know made a desk fan out of a record player you know vinyl record player and so when when we saw that in terms of design we were thinking okay you know what what does that mean what what could we do that would be cool uh, for vehicles what could we do with weapons so you saw for example in the trailer uh, we have a, a modified nailed gun which is a cool stealth weapon we have uh, my favorite, which is called El Pequeño, so the little one, uh, but it's actually a minigun made out of a motorbike engine. You know, it's 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 a lot of uh, crazy things like that, and that's where we had, I think, a lot of good back and forth also with with narrative. See, make sure it it works in our world in Yara. Um, so that that was a lot of fun. Yes. I, I actually really appreciate that because uh, that that immediately stuck with me with all the footage we've seen so far is it's got this sort of scrappy kit bashed approach to the design philosophy and then it feels like lived in it, it feels like the stu stuff that you would actually put together using parts that you have around um, this is like been always an interesting sort of balance for me in the Far Cry games is that there are violent dictators there's cult leaders but then there's also you know like you you're lighting tire tigers on fire there's drug trips and double jumps all the stuff that makes far cry special but it is a balancing act um was that something that you struggled with this time around or did you kind of like lean into the kind of tonal chaos of all of it i think the 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 truth is that is far cry uh, yeah. The balance of those two things, if you take one out, uh, you don't really have a, a Far Cry game. And I think what, you know, we saw as an opportunity here was how can we ground this? How can we wrap uh, these sort of gameplay elements, you know, the Amigos inside the, the world of, of Yara and try and come from it from a place of character? I think, you know, just to give you an example, um, with, uh, with Resolver, what we call Gorilla Resolver, that DIY philosophy, we grounded that in the character of Juan Cortez. This is someone who is a, you know, spy master, someone who has, you know, lived within multiple guerrilla movements and saw a need, which was, you know, when you're in the jungle, you need to, you know, make one guerrilla feel like a thousand. So he's, he got inspired from reading comic books and came up with this notion of the Supremos. And so mirroring that character with the sort of DIY philosophy and being able to see these Supremos and Resolver weapons in action, uh, it feels Far Cry. I, I can't put it <laughs> better right. than that. Like, it feels, uh, it, it feels right. And so it is absolutely a balancing act, but it's one we took great care with. Uh, for sure. That's awesome. Um, Giancarlo Esposito is amazing. He's one of my favorite actors. Sure actors. He's also like a tremendously menacing dude, but feels like it seems like he has a good sense of humor too. What was it like writing for him? Did you did you have to sort of like, did you find yourself in a mirror, like reciting lines and trying to sound as terrifying as possible? <laughs> um, While well, you talk about dream come true, I think, uh, you know, as we were going into the, the writing process with Anton, and as I was really trying to nail Anton's um, personality, you know, his voice uh, just started kind of being my go-to inspiration uh, naturally. And I think what he does and this, you know, from the moment we met, look, we had a, a multiple hour conversation talking about Anton, there was a, a, you know, we clicked. And I think what he brings is that gravitas. He brings that, um, you know, sense of, of power and duty and, 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 and at the same time, he brings this uh, empathy that was something that we really, you know, from meeting with him and talking to him, we really wanted to drill down on this empathy that, that he has for Diego, right, as a father. And, you know, so Giancarlo has this ability to, to balance both uh, committing and, and, and ordering these horrific things with being this this father that you you almost can can relate to and you know i'll tell you the 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 moment you know we we, we first met and started looking through scripts when he turned to me and started talking as anton uh i was terrified i was absolutely <laughs> terrified his eyes 
pierced <laughs> right into my skull. Um, and, and for me, it was uh, from there, it's just, well, you, you're seeing it right now and there's so much more to come, so much more. Um, the protagonist this time around is more fleshed out than we've ever seen. It's always been sort of like this kind of GoPro avatar for the player to run around and go crazy. But now uh, Danny has a, a full-fledged personality, voice acting. There's male and female versions of the protagonist. Um, how, how do their personalities differ between the two of them? Well, I think for us, you know, after talking, to, we talked about it quite a bit. I think that we wanted players to, to see themselves represented and have the option to pick between male and female uh, Dannys. But we wanted to keep their journey universal. Uh, that was that was something that, that felt, you know, we didn't want, uh, you know, one Danny to have a different journey than the other. And I think um, that really comes from the fact that this is a, a story of Danny finding their place in the revolution. Uh, it, it didn't feel right to just uh, tangent and do two completely different storylines. So really it's, we wanted one canon uh, storyline for our players. One of my favorite things about this franchise is the, the, the idea of every single time I think I have a solid plan for a scenario um, and I bring in the right tools and, and weapons and everything like that uh, and I go stealthy and then something happens, I trip a wire, a, a cage opens up, um, something bursts into flames, things go total crazy. Uh, I, I really, really love that sort of mix, that push and pull of like, this is what I'm bringing and this is what the environment is doing that I wasn't planning for. Um, can players expect a lot more of that kind of stuff? I, it's a very signature Far Cry here, but like, I, 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 is, is that gonna kind of keep ramping up for Far Cry 6? Oh, for sure, yeah. <clears throat> we, we have also a bunch of new elements to the game that we'll be talking about uh, very soon as well. But um, yeah, you know, like, we have the, the, the fire, you can see in the video, that's classic uh, Far Cry, but we, we improved that. Um, we made sure also, you know, that uh, that we support properly the different play styles, meaning uh, if you want to go in stealth and uh, really get better at stealth, uh, we, we do support that through the weapons, through the customization that you saw, and uh, even through the, the gear also that you can wear, which is more to me like a like an extension of your playstyle, you know. So what, what, what we wanted really is to make sure that if you like to play a certain way, the game says yes, and, you know, here is a way for you to make that playstyle even, even stronger, etc. And of course, on the other side, in terms of environment and AI, um, we have also quite a few uh, new cool surprises to reveal very soon um, and I'm excited for everyone to see that because I love that like you said that that crazy you know uh, we call this internally the anecdote factory right it's <laughs> like you go in there you have a plan and then oh my god yeah there is a you know like this animal jumping out of the bush and then jumps on an enemy that was about to throw a molotov and then the molotov yep. goes on the ground and then everything is on fire <laughs> so we yeah, exactly. That, that's Far Cry. That's Far Cry. So we, yes, we embrace that for sure. Far Cry 6 is out on October 7th. I am counting down the days. Thank you both so much for joining me today, and thank you all for watching. Good girl.
not a human. It's not a canine. It's one of them. One of what? I like it. A what? Like a, like a werewolf. Hey everybody, Michael Swaim here for IGN and the Summer of Gaming. About to talk with Sam Richardson about a film he produced, stars in, and uh, is actually an adaptation of a Ubisoft game called Werewolves Within. So I'm gonna go ahead and call this a with interview. I hope that's okay. Hey Sam, how are you doing? <laughs> hey Michael, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing Did fantastic. Did you say with interview? Yeah, with interview. You can have that. That's okay. free. Werewolves with interview. Uh, got to see the movie last night. It was tons of fun. Thanks for taking the time. First things first, Sam Richardson, you are quickly becoming a comedy icon by all accounts. Oh. Uh, when did you know your career was really blowing up and why was it that Shakespeare sketch we did where you're a shirtless fairy? <laughs> <laughs> Aspect of what sense? Yet careful be not to disturb his sword lest ardor thwart our purpose. I am the lord. <laughs> 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 that was so much fun when we did that. all those. It was, it was the, uh, the shirtless fairy. We did the, uh, the, the cowboy poker game. You shut your big bazoo. I can see that card plain as day, you bilk. Chisler. <laughs> Anything to embarrass you. Uh, but um, about this movie, you. what first got you to sign on to this project? You know, was it Werewolves? Was it Ubisoft's involvement, the chance to produce? Like, what got you to say, hey, this is something I want to be a part of? Uh, they reached out to me uh, and sent me the script and sent me the director, Josh Rubin's previous film, Scare Me. And I saw that and I really loved his like vision and what he did with that movie. And I love genre. So I, I love werewolf movies. I love spy movies. I of, you know all those sorts of things so this seemed like a great opportunity to get to participate in, in one and like even on the script it read like a movie that i would love in like the vein of like a fargo or clue or you know Shaun of the dead hot fuzz those sort of really fun but like really great movies it, it felt like this was like a, a a sibling to those so i was really excited to be a part of it you obviously shot in some cool locations i'm assuming that wasn't a giant soundstage you like took over a town or something right yeah so we shot up in new york like in the catskills and so that feel kind of is real like what it looks like there is pretty similar to what it felt like in that place. It was really cool. Not as dark and grimy, of course. And what's funny is like when we needed snow, there wasn't a lot of snow, so we had to like manufacture it. And when we didn't need snow, it was snowing all the time. So it made just things very slippery and wet and dangerous. I know the answer because I got a sneak peek, but can you tell the audience sort of what the connection is between the video game, which is a VR game, sort of based on those old party games you used to do, Mafia or Werewolf. How does the movie relate to the game? Did you play the, have you played that VR game? The, uh, you know, I played those sort of deductive reasoning party group games. And that's like lends itself very much to what this movie is. It's a bunch of people sequestered and like locked up in an inn and trying to figure out who or what is this culprit, this villain or this thing that is terrorizing them. It's that, but put to film. I think better than most video game adaptations, which, you know, I've seen them all and I've played them all. The ensemble comedy cast, like the pedigree here is just phenomenal. Obviously yourself and you're across from Alana Weintraub of This Is Us, but we also got George mm -hmm. Basil from Crashing, Sarah Burns from Barry, Catherine Curtin from Orange is the New Black, Harvey Guillen from What We Do in the Shadows, Rebecca Henderson from Russian Doll, Cheyenne Jackson, 30 Rock, like on and on. So uh, can you give us just one anecdote or moment of gratitude about like, how was it to bounce off this amazing ensemble cast? Well, it's really incredible, you know, cause everybody hits a grand slam. Are we really in a Mexican standoff right now? Baby, don't say Mexican. Just stand up. Typically that doesn't work. You know, if everybody is, is, is firing on all cylinders, you just get a bunch of noise. But you get such brilliant comedy vets playing in sync with each other. It was really a joy the whole time. Like I never once kind of felt uh, uneasy or like uh, uh, frustrated in trying to get something out that I couldn't because like there was oh we were always listening we were always playing off of each other and we just kind of be had become like a family. Michaela's brilliant, George is brilliant, Rebecca's brilliant, Harvey's brilliant, Cheyenne's brilliant, Milana's brilliant. Everybody tour de forces. This is Ubisoft's first independently produced film, and you have a producer credit on this film as well. For hardcore Sam Richardson fans, like how much of your creative vision is in here? Did that 
How'd that producer credit work out for you, buddy? Usually as an actor, you're kind of like suggesting, but it, it, as a producer, my suggestions, you, you, get, you gotta kind of listen to them. So like in certain scenes, like something's going one way. And of course, Josh, a brilliant director. So there was, there was never anything where I was like, this doesn't work, I gotta fix this. But I certainly was able to not feel bad about giving notes in these scenes. And then like in the edit also, like sort of helping the feel of it. I really want to make sure I was a producer in this, not just in title, but in lending my energies and my comedic eye to this movie. So last but not least, if your next role had to be another character from a video game, and remember you said you've played them all, so there's no wiggle yes. room on this. What video game yeah, okay. character do you have an affinity with, like, who would you want to play? Part of me, I also want to say Blanca, but I don't want to say Blanca because not, that's not real. I don't want to be Blanca. <laughs> Make me Kid Icarus. I'll be Kid Icarus in the movie. Excellent answer. I would love to see that shirtless again. Yeah, a little toga. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we ran it on our own. It's just a Hey, you go ahead. Please, don't spare oh, me. Oh, please, please. Don't. Oh, please. Please don't Bear bum the lock. Me. Oh my goodness, myself. I could have what? gotten it. Sam, that is all the time we have, but so good to talk to you. Thank you so much. The movie is Werewolves Within, and it is available in theaters on June 25th and on demand July 2nd. Make sure you check it out. Thank you so much.
jump to pieces here. Carriage. It's your only way up. Looks like we have come. Oh, that looked good, didn't it? And if you like that, then make sure to stay tuned next month because Fract is going to be the Upload Access Game of the Month. We'll have plenty more to share on the game. Thanks so much to Endreams for showing us the latest from Fract. All right, let's kick off the show. Welcome to the Upload VR Showcase 2021. I'm Zena. And I'm Jamie. We're going to be your guys for the next 45 minutes or so of VR game trailers and reveals. As always, we want to give a big thank you to every VR developer taking part today. It hasn't been the easiest year for anyone, and the work you're trusting us to present is truly admirable. Jamie. Zena. I think it's time to introduce VOD.
sure VOD is in my top five favorite VR characters now. Yep, I guess you could say my body is ready. Oh god. Anyway, moving on, let's get the latest from Walt of the Wizard. We've done some amazing things together, haven't we? And just when we think we've seen it all, our reality keeps expanding. This is natural magic. And it is yours to control. But be careful. This reality is not ours alone. The humans have discovered a way into the fortress. Pitiful creatures. They won't last long. Walt of the Wizard's Natural Magic update is coming out on July 6th. Earlier this year, Indie Studio 17-Bit revealed a gorgeous new survival VR game called Song in the Smoke. Today, we've got a sneak peek at an in-depth look at the game coming your way soon. This is at its core uh, a survival adventure game. It's a game about a person's journey through kind of a very vast, um, wild landscape, a lot of danger, a lot of beauty. It's a very somber game. It's kind of different than what we do at 17-bit normally. Uh, we're known for kind of cartoony, goofy, fun stuff. This game is a very different direction, um, but it's been a fantastic project. It's really, uh, you know, when I first experienced VR, I was immediately completely floored. I mean, I was in tears almost at how incredible the experience is. I mean, it's not a game anymore. It's a, it's a world that you are inside of. And when I started thinking about what I would like to do, I thought about creating a world. I mean, creating a, a living, breathing world, which you hear all the time, but for the first time, it wouldn't be just a game. You would be in this world. And if we could make the rules of the world simple enough, you could survive virtually in this world. And I wanted to populate that world with living creatures that lived and behaved and acted like real wild animals. I want these animals to have reactions. I want them to feel fear, to be afraid, hungry, tired, nervous. Uh, and I wanted to make a, a world that was completely interlocked and completely inter interbreeding. The deer are hungry and they're looking for food and they're nervous and they're startled by sounds. If they see you from a distance, nothing is canned in this game. Like everything is a kind of a dice roll or driven by the AI to be like, okay, if he sees you at a distance and he's well fed, he's maybe not that nervous, he's gonna watch you for a while before he gets spooked. If you run after him or start coming at him, he's gonna, at some point, he's gonna react realistically and he's gonna run away. So everything in this world is meant to be alive. I mean, I was watching my children play chasing fish at the ocean in this little kind of pond and they had a net. And just them running around chasing after these animals was incredibly engaging to them. And I was like, this doesn't have to be crazy high levels of artificial intelligence. It just has to act realistically and be sort of alive. Song in the Smoke is... Wait, that logo doesn't... Oh, there we go. Song in the Smoke is coming to Oculus Rift, Quest, and PSVR this summer.
against looks like a brutal and bloody take on Beat Saber, and I'm totally into it. Next up, we've got a little help from our friends. Hi everyone, we are Cass and Cherry and we have a few new VR titles for you today. We have Space Battles, Drum Battles, Samurai Battles and even adorable Dinosaur Puzzle Battles. Take a good look because these uh, games will be with you very soon. Eternal Starlight is a tactical space combat game in which you command a fleet of ships. Zoom in and out using intuitive VR controls and outflank your enemies when the game launches on Oculus Quest and PC VR next week. Samurai Slaughterhouse is all in the name. Inspired by classic movies, the game is all about slicing through enemies with your katana. It's coming to PC VR in the near future. Smash Drums is every drummer's VR dream. This VR rhythm game trades lightsabers for drumsticks as you smash your way through 21 songs. It will be on Oculus App Lab on June 17th. And finally, let's take a look at new gameplay from the upcoming PSVR version of Puzzle Bubble 3D. This classic puzzle game has been completely reimagined in VR, complete with adorable dinos. It's coming to the platform later this year. Black is a VR music game that allows you to play air guitar and feel like a rock star just using hand tracking technology. So that means no plastic guitar, no globes, no anything, just you rocking hard. It is really amazing to think about this last year, because at the beginning we were thinking really small. After the partnership with Vertigo Games, the game kind of exploded. We have bands in the soundtrack that we always love, like The Offspring. The lead guitarist from Guitar Hero, Marcus Henderson, has joined and plagued. His experience and passion has taken the game to another level. Strap on the headset and get yourself on stage. You'll be able to pick from your choice of guitars and amps and help you power yourself through this incredible rock journey that is waiting for you. We've made a huge progress on the gameplay over the last months. Now we have several different nodes, power apps, mini games, crowd interaction, and much more. We have famous music, an amazing team, and we are putting all our heart on the game so we can create a real love letter to rock. We're some of the biggest, loudest, most insanely cool songs. So get your fingers warmed up and we'll see you in the game soon. Get your VR air guitar on when Unplugged launches on Oculus Quest and hand tracked enabled Steam VR headsets later this fall. Now time to check in with yet more friends. <laughs> Hey Max, how many times have we had to bust out of some criminal cheese balls lair? This week or in Toto? You'll be locked into a room and must use your wits to obtain egress. You know, you could just say it's an escape room. Just go on in. We've locked you here in the park's old security center and hidden clues all over the place. The goal is to find the three hidden keys. You'll be judged on how fast you escape and also on your evening gown. The three keys will be hidden within three deceptively innocent receptacles. Like a puppy! Or Greta Thunberg! That sure looks like a key. Or maybe that's just what we want you to think. <laughs> I prefer my screwdrivers with just a hint of beef jerky. Oh, a vintage 1972 Aquabear? 
Bears cartoon show, Lunch Pail. They say, if you say blue key over and over again, it turns into gibberish. <laughs> Whose bright idea was it to put an Aqua Bear costume in the closet? Now look at this! God, those things are creepy! So that's what happened to my frozen bagel weenie. I don't know how adventurers ever got by without primary colored keys. Ooh, a clue about the bigger story inside the smaller story! It's like Inception! Only dumber! Go for it, Max. I'm recording all this for posterity. Isn't that illegal? Maybe. Well clued, kiddo. Come downstairs for a debrief. But I don't wear any. <laughs> oh, I get it. That's some top-notch deductifying there, cadet. You've passed the Get a Clue Challenge. Of course, had this been a real death trap, there would have been poison gases and live tigers, so it really doesn't count. But here is your great report. We cannot wait to meet Sam and Max in person this summer in VR. Antract hoop shooting? We're in. Okay, time to welcome back Cloudhead Games with a sneak peek at Pistol Whip's new style system. Pistol Whip. Hey, I'm Joel from Cloudhead Games. Today we're gonna give you the very first look at our new style system for Pistol Whip. It's a way to let you remix the gameplay to make it harder, easier, or just plain wild. I'm here with our lead level designer and my new best friend, Daniel Taylor. He's gonna jump into the game and we're gonna give you the tour. Let's go. Pistol Whip continues to evolve, and this update brings significant changes to the game, adding tons of new features and content. So we've given the whole UI a classy new look and feel. So what is a style? Well, you can think of it as a preset that combines a weapon type with gameplay modifiers to remix Pistol Whip in endless ways, each with their own custom leaderboards. The intensity rating will help you find styles that fit your skill, mobility level, or just your mood every time you play. When Daniel selects a scene, his current active style will show here. Right now, he's got Classic selected, which is a single pistol and no modifiers. This is how we recommend everybody starts playing Pistol Whip, but when you're ready for more, just look to the new Styles menu. Here, you'll find tons of fun play styles to try out, curated by the devs and the community. Daniel's checking out the Featured section, which will recommend two themed styles every week. He's looking for some light-hearted gunslinging, so he's chosen I Reckon Your Heads Are Too Big style, which features our new revolver weapon type and a brand new modifier. Our campaign scenes can now be played with any style. He's back, and this time, he's got bullets. Now Daniel wants to see what everyone else is playing, so he's gonna head to the trending section, which shows the most popular styles. He's going with Burst Fire Deadeye this time, which uses the weapon from our 2089 sci-fi campaign. 
this feels a bit too easy for a pro like Daniel, so he's gonna switch to customize mode. Here, you can modify a style or build a brand new one from scratch using any one of our five different weapon types and a huge collection of modifiers. Since it's leg day, Dan's gonna add bullet hell, another brand new mod that'll definitely make you sweat. Nice try, bud. All right, that was just a taste of the new style system. We can't wait to get it into your hands because like everything else in Pistol Whip, it'll get bigger and better with your feedback. It releases this summer alongside our brand new cinematic action campaign, Smoke and Thunder. I'll see you there, heroes. Now we're going from Rhythm Shooter to Rhythm of the Universe. Let's take a look at how Rotu Entertainment is using its upcoming VR game to make a positive impact on the Earth. Every story has a beginning. At Rotu Entertainment, our beginning starts with a purpose to make a positive impact in the world around us. We have partnered with numerous nonprofits during past projects and are happy to announce our partnership with the Wildlife Warriors Worldwide, established by Steve and Terry Irwin. Road to Entertainment and Media is donating 5% of the virtual reality game Rhythm of the Universe Ionia to the Wildlife Warriors in an effort to support wildlife conservation. Join us as we make a positive impact in the world, one game at a time. Rhythm of the Universe brings a frankly stunning world to VR headsets Q3 this year. Looks like you've hit the jackpot with another relaxing mission. And while you'll need to go undercover, and make use of our latest disguise technology, you'll also enjoy traveling in style to luxurious locales. Of course, the agency will provide a well-balanced meal plan and a strict health regimen to keep you in shape. But you will be able to enjoy the finer things now and again. Speaking of which, you'll be meeting my favorite actor. We've all seen him on the big screen and the red carpet. Please help me welcome Mr. John Juniper. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. You always get the best missions, but after all the brilliant work you've done, you deserve everything that comes your way. Please just don't embarrass us in front of Mr. Juniper. I can see you're settling in. Please make yourself comfortable. Expect lasers, bombs, assassins, and, well, death. And I expect you to die too. Coming this summer to all headsets. Welcome to the Oasis. I mean, welcome to the Upload VR Showcase. My name is Mike, and today I'm here to introduce four new VR indie titles heading your way soon. From ferocious monster battles to roguelite shooters and uh, saving sushi bars to becoming an executioner in VR. These games highlight the sheer creativity of our VR indie developers. So, let's dive in. Blockbuster VR is a manic kaiju game coming to a headset near you soon. Let off some steam by unleashing your inner Godzilla, smashing the city to dust and feasting on its poor citizens, all while fending off an army trying to take you down. Expect more information on this monster masher later this year. Sushi Ben VR is a vibrant anime style game which is all about saving your favorite sushi bar from going out of business. But you won't be serving up the sushi, instead your job is to convince other people to come and eat at your favorite spot by completing tasks and narrative encounters. A unique game with a unique art style coming in 2022. And 
And this is where things get a little darker. Sentence VR puts you in the grim shoes of an executioner. It's not all head chopping and appeasing the bloodthirsty crowd though. Developer Samuel Gordon hopes players will question their actions and maybe even feel a pinch of regret for their deeds. This will be coming to PC VR headsets next month. And finally, this is Sweet Surrender, a new roguelike shooter from the developers of Growrilla. This game will have you blasting your way through a procedurally generated dystopian mega tower with agile combat, upgradable abilities, and a cool cell shaded art style. This one looks to be a blast for PC VR shooter fans looking for something a little different. You can check out an early demo of this game as part of Steam's Next Fest coming next week. And that's all from me. Thanks to Upload for inviting me to take part in the Summer Showcase and enjoy the rest of the show. Cheers. PSVR fans, we know you've been waiting and we're happy to confirm that Winlands 2 is finally coming to the platform later this summer. But stay tuned because here's a little more PSVR news. It's a green light for Traffic Jam's PSVR version. How about we keep things green? Hi everyone, my name is Kami and I represent Incovo at today's showcase. Green Hell VR is a project that we fell in love with from the early start. That's why we decided to work on two versions of the game at the same time with two separate teams. One team is responsible for the PC VR version and the other team is responsible for the Quest version. Now I'd like to invite you to enjoy our newest video. I am glad we came back here. I feel you. The place is beautiful.
From hot and sweaty jungles to the frozen wastes of LA, it's time for another look at After the Fall. After the Fall is all about a VR co-op experience with four people and replayability. We want you to continuously play with your friends and go in over and over to just kick ass with your friends and fight really cool enemies. In After the Fall, we have a uh, game director system, uh, which basically means that every session that you play is different every time you play it. For example, you can have a, a huge horde of snow breeze coming at you, or you can have multiple stronger enemies at you. It's, it's you know, every session you do is basically different. For After the Fall, we really focused on cross-platform. So you can play on PC, Quest or PS4 all together and still experience the same gameplay. Our largest challenge is getting those very high-end PC players able to play with those lower-end mobile VR players. Visually, they're obviously not going to be the same. What needs to be the same is the gameplay. The enemies are on the same locations, the walls are on the same locations, where player A is looks the same as where you would be for player B, and it's shooting as well, they should all be identical. So we make sure automatically that they are in parity with each other. Everybody playing together and shooting zombies together, that is like our, our core, the core experience we're trying to create. Four player co op? Check. Cross play on all platforms? Check. Hordes of zombies? You got it. Can After the Fall just be here already, please? Hi, I'm Tom Hall, Senior Creative Director for Resolution Games. We've got a couple of really cool updates for you. Let's take a look. One we're excited about, The Last Stone, is now going to have a single player campaign, which is really cool. You get to battle against these four Octopresence mod ops. Once you've defeated all of them, you get to face their boss, Argentia. She's a really cool boss that uh, is going to be difficult to defeat, but I think you can do it. One of the cool things about this new update is uh, some of the sort of flavor around the world. You get to learn more about this interesting future dystopia we've created. Also in this update, you'll get to see a new area, Scrapper Street, full of robots moving around and uh, cars flying overhead and more of the cool, edgy future that Blast On fans have grown to love. At the end of Scrapper Street is a new arena, and you're gonna have to find it and earn your way into it. One minute. Also featured in this update is the ability to use tokens, so you can put them in a jukebox and choose many songs or you can put them in Super Alien Blast, the new and updated version of Alien Blast. And here is update number two, the update to Demio. Welcome to the realm of the Rat King. Blaston's upcoming update looks brilliant, and as for Demio, let's just admit that the Rat King is going to wipe the floor with us many times over. Now, did someone say X-Ray Kill Cam? Rated M for Mature. I cannot wait to use the X-ray kill cam to shoot them in the dick. Whoa! What? Okay, fine, sorry. Anyway, we're on the home stretch now. 
We're proud to debut this next title coming to Oculus Quest in 2022. Hi, my name is Josh Menricks, Studio Director at Secret Location. From the launch of our first game, Blasters of the Universe, back in 2017, the VR community has always been incredibly supportive of our studio. And now we're super excited to share our latest project with you. Today, we're revealing the official teaser for our first competitive multiplayer game coming to Oculus Quest in 2022. Let's take a look. Thanks so much to Secret Location for sharing the first ever look at the new Nerf VR game coming next year. So, it's time for our final game of the day. And this may be one that you've already seen. It actually may be one that you've already played. But this year, we wanted to close out on an experience that we personally believe is truly pushing VR interaction and immersion forwards. So please enjoy the following trailer. And that was the Upload VR Showcase 2021. You can check out all of today's announcements and get some extended looks over at UploadVR.com. A huge thanks to all the developers that took part today for making this show as awesome as it was. And of course, thanks to you for joining us today. We'll see you next time. That's about all the summer sun in your tank for today, y'all. But thank you. <laughs> See what I did there? Thank you so much for joining us for the Ubisoft Board event. Now, IGN Summer of Gaming continues tomorrow with tons more exciting E3 coverage, like the big showcase from Xbox and Bethesda. Now, this is actually going to be the first major event from Bethesda since they were purchased by Microsoft. So you're definitely going to want to tune in to join us to learn more about the future of franchises like Fallout, Elder Scrolls, and if we are lucky, if we're so, so lucky, Starfield. Now, there's also a showing from Square Enix right after that. Now, Square also has a lot in store for us, so make sure to tune back in right here to keep your summer going strong. Like that sun in the sky, only in the mornings. Y'all know how it works. It's how it works. Now, as for all things Summer of Gaming, you can find our coverage everywhere at IGN.com, on YouTube and social media, and now even on your smart TVs. And for additional content, check out E3's online portal and app featuring virtual booths, articles, videos, and more. Or you know what you can also do? You can just tune back in right here tomorrow and we'll bring the fun straight to your face. Yeah. See you then. Thank you all so, so much for watching. <laughs>